Dave Chappelle showed up to a local city council meeting in his hometown of Ohio, and he dropped some serious truth. We have the video, watch. New York Times and everything, I think that you made the point of the night, given the national narrative, and given what the culture of our town is like, that the council has a tremendous opportunity to be like a leader in progressive law enforcement. One of the reasons that we were on the front page of New York Times is because their travel editor is a, is a woman that I went to school with here in Yale Springs. At that time, we all knew Officer Grody because his sister was my music teacher. We all knew Officer Banner's children. We all knew Officer Nipper's children. And now we are being policed by what feels like an alien force. Huge gaff on New Year's Eve. I saw it all go down. I was there with my children, and I was there with my friends and neighbors. In all fairness, the crowd was drunk because it was New Year's Eve. And I left early because nobody felt completely right. So I am trying to be balanced and fair. But what I did want to know is what is this pool of law enforcement that you can pull a chief out of that is special enough to police this town, which is wildly weak. So I would, I would beseech the council to look deeply and to look hard because, I mean, we got, I mean, this is a golden opportunity. Literally, you could kill the game. In this Trump era, this is an opportunity to show everybody that local politics reigns supreme. We can make our corner of the world outstanding. So I'm just begging you to find a candidate that matches the culture of this town, which is, which is incredibly unique, which is renowned for being incredibly unique. That's all I want to say. Thank you, David. Amazing thoughts, five words or less. The Chappelle shows up. There goes the neighborhood. Dave, you're amazing. What a stand up guy. Oh, see, that was good. You see how she uh, Okay, uh, you see how you I guys came have up. Even though we had, no, I had the same one as Grace, but okay. So this is incredible. Uh, he brings up community policing, which is so important, yeah. something that he remembered as a kid and he feels that we have uh, strayed from. Right. What did you guys think? Tell me. I thought it was incredibly compelling. Um, one thing about Dave is that people think he's crazy because of the whole history in the past, and he just left the show after he got that deal. He is an extremely intelligent person, yeah. and I've seen him time and time again speak about truths that you're like, oh, it's Dave Chappelle. You expect him just to be funny, but when you actually listen, he'll you know put a couple jokes into it. But what he's saying is is 1,000% correct, and yeah. I feel like especially in these smaller towns. You need guys like, uh, there's an officer, Norman, I think it's Norman in Kansas, or somewhere in the Midwest, he got really big on oh, social during, media. Was it during Ferguson? No, 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 it's a white uh, police officer okay. guy in the Midwest, but like he's, I gotta, I'll find his Instagram. I think it's Officer Norman or something, maybe somebody can help me with that, but you need people like that who go around to the neighborhood and saying hi and saying hello, yep. and we don't have that anymore. No. You know, even from when my father was growing up, you knew the milkman, you knew this guy. We don't have milkman, we don't have certain people, but we still have police that go around in our neighborhoods to protect and serve the community. That's the whole deal, and we feel like, you know, a lot of times, especially as a black man in certain communities and just people, period, because you saw in that video that, you know, it was all kind of people in that area, whatever town that was in Ohio. But just to know who the person was, like yeah. even me growing up, I knew Chauncey, he went to high school with my sisters, and he became the police chief of, you know, our town, our city in Stone Mountain locally. But we knew everybody around, he knew that. You know, that's not like you, like what happened? If something's going on, he can talk to you, you felt comfortable. You didn't wanna hide from him and, and we, we, we missed that a lot. And I, I feel like if we got back to that or just the humanization of, you know, instead of being like, oh, that's a cop, like, you know, hey, how you doing, officer? Yeah, it's a personal but, level. And yeah, there, some, I forget who the, the police chief too was. Um, during Ferguson that came out and spoke very, uh, I don't know if it was from Ferguson oh, or that was a new by- police officer you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Or that, 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 that really brought community policing onto the forefront and right. it's created this whole new conversation and how we can implement that. And uh, here's you know Dave Chappelle continuing that dialogue. I mean, yeah, what do you think? It's, it's a nonpartisan issue and it should be a nonpartisan issue. There's no way you can disagree with what Dave Chappelle was saying there. I never personally grew up with, with that experience with the cops, but I know that it did exist at some point. And it just seems in our modern era with all the technology, the military technology that cops have because of the wars, they come back, all that technology. Um, it kind of, it creates this divide between us and it makes this 
it makes the cops afraid of the people, mm -hmm. and it makes the people afraid of the cops. That's mm. so true. Yeah. You have to look at it from both perspectives. Absolutely right. Yeah, I, I just I agree with what both of you guys are saying about community policing being about first and foremost the serving the community and having people of the community that understand the community, protecting that community. And on top of that, what I really like that we're seeing, I think it's a little bit of a trend, is um, celebrities or public figures using their notoriety to uh, cause a positive change in their local governments. So we saw Chance the Rapper donated a million dollars mm -hmm. to uh, what was it? Chicago public to the schools. Chicago Public Schools, yeah. and then he challenged the mayor um, to also donate and just saying, "Do your job." And I yeah. think that it's important to remember when we when we report on stories like this that local government matters. And there was an election just this past mm -hmm. Tuesday uh, in Los Angeles, and you know, just be up to date on your local elections, and mm -hmm. uh, you know. Educating yourself on the locally elected officials because that's where change happens. And I think that Dave Chappelle's point that really stuck with me is that we have an opportunity to make our community outstanding. Like, don't be disheartened by what's going on yeah. in the Trump era. We can make positive changes in our own communities, but it has to start within these communities and getting right. to know everybody yeah. and promoting yeah. uh, empathy and compassion, understanding and action. Exactly. And so that's what I love seeing people with a platform, with a voice, taking action and urging people that follow them to do the same. It's not that difficult. Go to a yeah. community meeting. Right. Yeah, I yeah. think you really hit the nail on the head. With in, in our age of social media, we tend to look at this whole big picture and we end up letting it influence our decisions we make at a local level. If we just focus at a local level and treat these people in our community as your your neighbors, mm -hmm. I think it would, it, we would be a lot better off. And it's easy to get disheartened because you see this stuff that's going on on Twitter, you see this yeah. stuff that's happening at the major federal level from Donald Trump or from his administration. Yeah. You're like, I can't do anything, I'm just one person. You can, you can you create can. Some micro, micro versus macro, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you can create so much change. I have a girlfriend that just uh, is now in Santa Cruz County is now on the city council. And to me, that's like such, a, she's, she's I, the, the very first female of color to be on our city council in Santa Cruz, I'm from Santa Cruz. But to like see her evoking change every day, and you don't even have to be on city council. I mean, you can do, you can do what Dave Chappelle does and show up, uh -huh. but or just educate yourself and at least show up to vote at the very, very least. Uh -huh. um, but to see that, that you can evoke change um, and anybody can do it if you just put your mind to it and it really does impact the grand scheme of things. And that the community outreach is so important too. So if you can have police officers that are outreaching to the community and you can have the citizens doing um, it back, that it creates that respect that you talked about, Amir, yeah. which is so important because when there's a respect between the two of them, yeah. you're gonna be, less assumptions are gonna occur. And when less assumptions occur, then there's less of a bias, and then that can really prevent some disastrous situations. Yeah. Yeah. So it only is a benefit. I, I don't understand why this isn't rolled out on a national level and in, in, in a more bigger, grander scale. Yeah, the officer I was speaking about is uh, Officer Tommy Norman. He's yes. in uh, Arkansas, yeah. I just pulled up his Instagram. And I remember when he first started, he's over like one million followers now. Whoa. When he first started, People are like, oh, this guy's trying to be famous and this and that. But it's no, he was setting the example, showing you what community policing yeah. was supposed to be. So on his Instagram, he goes, and now people that follow him, I notice I'll look in the comments and they'll be like, oh, where's Miss Doris? Like oh, people are like becoming so fans cool. of like people in the community. He'll go up to the kids and speak to the kids and, you know, just. He puts it on his Instagram. I mean, obviously he's doing his job and he's doing a great job at it, but he's trying to be that example of showing you what community policing is. Know who, you know, some of the elders are in your community, know who the kids are, know what school they're going to, know, you know, where they belong and know the parents and things like that. And that's what he strives to do. So he started having people like want to send these kids gifts. And wow. like last year I saw over Christmas, there were, you know, celebrities and other people started sending gifts and sending things for certain people that he'll have on his Instagram. That's he films amazing. it, he's like, hey, this is from such and such in New Orleans. They wanted you guys to have this. And, you know, and I think stuff like that is incredible. I'm not saying every cop's gonna do that because that's not right. you know the personality right. of everyone, but I feel like it's great that he's using today's mm -hmm. methods to reach the yes. community, yeah. but he's also reaching, you know, our country and people all over, you know. And it's know infectious, about it. right? Yeah. If I was a police officer, or even just a, you know, an, an everyday citizen, you you look at that Instagram and you want to be more involved. You want to see what you can do. It it it, it creates an altruistic relationship where you mm -hmm. want to help the police officer too, yeah. and you want to look at it, things from their perspective as well. And I think that mindset of always giving the other person the benefit of the doubt yeah. and looking out for the other person is 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 only going to create a successful outcome.
time. It's yeah. crazy. I had an incident the other day. I was driving on third and I made a right on Robertson and there was a cop car behind me. My, my tent's a little darker and mm -hmm. in LA it's illegal. Uh, it's really dark. Um, <laughs> so, and I was like, I told my girl, I was like, I'm about to get pulled over. She's like, why? I was like, she didn't do, I just, she was like, you didn't do anything. I was like, I'm black, I'm getting pulled over. Yeah. I literally saw the way that they pulled behind me and then they waited. So then I pulled to the side to park and I was going real slow and I pulled in the meter. And that's when I went into uh, Lit, 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 help me out. Lit. Oh, Le Pain Quotidien. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> um, <It's a> cafe. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the cafe. Because we were going to look at a, at, a, at a new apartment or whatever on uh, Burton. So I park, we go into Le Pain, I get my latte, then we go into the lobby of the place where we're going, and those two cops are in there. They were there checking, like it was a health and wellness inspection or something. So, so total you know, coincidence. Total coincidence. So I walk in, I talk to everybody. I mean, you guys yeah. know me. Like I walk in and I'm like, hey guys, I was like, oh, you waiting for me. I was like, you guys need any backup? You know, I always try to make a, yes, that's what my girlfriend said yesterday, actually. It's really good. <laughs> but, you know, I try to, you know, say a lame joke. I don't try to say a lame joke. I think they're funny, but I'm fine. Later, you're they're told not. they're okay. Yeah. Um, and then the Same. guy, one of the guys, like, one guy was kind of super quiet, but the other guy was like, you know, can I check your ID? Like he was messing with me and I started messing with him. And I was like, hey guys, you ready to just go and kick in there? I'll be the Samuel L. Jackson of the SWAT team, you know? So, and then we had a great conversation while we were waiting for the uh, realtor to get there for a good like 15 minutes. And my yeah. girl goes, see, told you they weren't bad. I was like, they didn't know me. They was gonna pull me over earlier. Uh, <laughs> it's so true though. But, like, you know, it's just those conversations and not being able, yeah. afraid to say hello. Like right. when I walk into a room, I wanna smile and say hi, cause I don't know what you're going through at home. Mm -hmm. I don't know like yeah. what kind of day yeah. you're having. And you don't know what kind of day I'm having. Right. And this kind of goes to another story that we'll cover another uh, later on. But I always try to say like, if I can spread even an ounce of happiness for that one moment, that hopefully changes your day. So it's almost a pay it forward. That's awesome. It may I not be, I love you so yeah, much. but it may not be buying you something because no. I've done that before too, or like hold a door for her. That would be good for me. You know, though. I've seen an old lady like move her purse to the other side when I'm walking, but I'll hold the door open and wait for wow. you after you mail or like in an elevator. You're like you let a woman still go giving her the benefit of the doubt. That's you have amazing. To. Amazing. You gotta change the, you gotta change yeah. the mentality. You gotta the change the mentality. That's, and I would yeah. even say, to, uh, you know, so to speak, because I know that there is, uh, we need police reform. I know that there's a lot of incidents of police brutality, believe me. Um, but also, I think it's important for people to understand that some of these police officers, what they go through and and where you mentioned how that person's day is. I remember we covered a story on CNN and um, it wasn't one of those cut and dry stories of police brutality. It, right. There was some layers to the story and then we, after we did some digging and my knee jerk reaction, this is where I checked myself, was to, um, because there were so many incidents of police brutality that at that time, it was to blame the police officer. And then I did some digging and I found out that that police officer, um, I found out that there were some other incidents that were not caught on tape, but more importantly, that police officer also had just come from like a suicide. And earlier before yeah. that, he'd come from something else where like it was an armed robbery mm -hmm. and he hadn't slept. And it's stressful. It's stressful. Super and stressful. we don't, some of these departments don't have the implementation and the structure to make sure that they have their break after 12 hours yeah, right. or 16 hours or whatever that break may be. And so those are some things structurally that need to be implemented too, to protect the police officers, yeah. to make sure that they're well equipped, that they're well rested, that they're well trained to handle these different types of situations. And so why not give them all the tools as well? That's not to excuse the bad police officers out there and the incidents. It's not what I'm saying, but it's it's also to uh, just understand what they're going through as, right. as well. Yeah. So like just. Next time you see a police officer, smile at him and say, hey, yeah. how's it going? Hi, officer. Yeah. Start with that. Totally. Even when you get pulled over, trust me. I'm Humanize them. Yeah. <laughs> don't dehumanize and them. And hopefully that sets an example. Um, if if they don't have that same candor, maybe it'll rub off on them. You it never will. know. I 100% 100, 100 believe that it will rub yeah. off on them. I agree. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Oh, and Kenny, you're so sweet. Will you yeah. say your last thing again? You just like to, you drop like a little bit of kindness. To yeah, you just you try to bring some type of kindness, whether if it's smiling or like, I walked in here when I was doing this live show last week and I was like, yeah. I just was loud. I was like, hey, everybody, how you doing? Yeah. And people were looking at me like, this is weirdo. But it's amazing. Some, it's gonna be one person if you, that it's is infectious. gonna giggle yeah. or, you know, kind of turn that mood around. I love and it. And that's the only thing I try to do. Yep, it's like paying it forward. So I'm going to live like Kenny. Be like Kenny. <laughs> All right, please I ain't perfect. Share, Maybe not. share your thoughts in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on Pop Trigger.